Uh, Jeffrey, how would you describe this new chapter of the How to Train Your Dragon adventure? Um, well, I think this is a, a, a great new adventure for uh, Hiccup and for Toothless. For Hiccup, he's five years older. He's gone from being a boy into adulthood. And with that, has incredible new responsibilities. And in a way, the exact same thing has happened to Toothless because what we discover through the course of this story is is that he actually is the same age. And he also is going through an extraordinary transformation as he goes from a pup, you know, into a full, full-born leading dragon. Uh, what makes the relationship between Hiccup and Toothless so special? I think the thing that really bonds Hiccup and Toothless together and actually sort of makes them, it's, it's that, that bond that, you know, I think in today's world, the way I would relate to it, it's how we relate between our own pets. It's how I am with my dog, you know, and, uh, you know, I think there's that sort of unconditional love that exists for one another, uh, by each other, and with it is just an unbreakable bond. And, and trust, and together they're able to actually pull off, you know, a victory in what is their greatest, you know, challenge that they've ever faced. Um, Astrid is a very strong female character. What qualities does she possess that connect with girls around the world? Well, I think the thing that is most appealing and most distinctive about Astrid is, is that she is, she, charges to her own beat. She, uh, she isn't following someone else's path. She's not a princess looking for a prince. You know, she exists on her own terms. Uh, she has her own path. She has a sense of right and wrong. Um, and as such, has a very powerful role in this movie. And I think that her independence and, uh, and I think her strength of character is what makes her so powerful in this in the movie and why I think people, men and women, relate uh, to her, but it's quite inspiring to young girls, uh, you know, in that she is, in every sense, really uh, Hiccup's equal. Tell me about the new characters in this film. Okay. <laughs> Volka. <Yeah. laughs> Um, well, I think we've got a, a number of actually, you know, new characters in, in the movie. I mean, I, from a, from a, in terms of the human characters, I think the most exciting thing in, in this movie is, is that, um, uh, is the discovery of, uh, uh, Hiccup has of meeting his mother, someone who has been out of his life for 20 years. And through a flashback, we actually see the circumstances of that. And so both for Hiccup growing up as a, as a boy and, and for his dad, for Stoic, um, you know, in a way she's really robbed away from them and after 20 years there's a, they reconnect with one another and it's a phenomenal piece of storytelling, I think, um, you know, by Dean Dubois, the writer-director of the movie and, and uh, very, very emotional and, um, and very powerful. The other thing is, is dragons. We meet all kinds of new and interesting dragons in the story, as well as a villain character, um, you know, who really has a very dark purpose with, with dragons, Drago. And uh, so I think these are having this sort of, uh, you know, uh, goodness and darkness come into the movie just adds a whole level of complexity to it. Excellent. Um, DreamWorks is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. How has animation evolved since you first started the company? Well, I think animation, you know, uh, in 20 years is, you know, uh, almost night from day, but I think it continues to accelerate in the way in which the level of innovation, innovation of our technology and our tools, and therefore the stories that we can tell. Uh, with How to Train Your Dragon, it's the first movie that has used this new tool, tool set. Uh, it's called Apollo. And Apollo. Uh, allows our animators to actually go back to doing what they did many, many, many years ago in which they were able to actually animate on a piece of paper with a pencil, which we've always felt was much more emotional. 
uh, than moving dials and graphs inside of a computer. And so now we've actually gotten the computer to be able to mimic what we used to do with pencil and paper. And so the level of emotion and acting that is realized today in this movie, and this is the first movie to ever use this tool, is so far beyond what we've been able to do up till now. And that kind of innovation is going to keep on going. It just, it's, it, we, it never stops. Excellent. Thank you, sir. That Good. touched on Apollo. Perfect.